Good morning, Interweb, World Builders Log 17. Today, we are going to look at some orogeny, but first, I want to do a little bit more evolution. So we finished up the last video by adding in this subduction zone here with a view to subducting this ocean plate to try and resolve these like hanging subduction zones. To save time off camera, I cut out all of the pieces on this plate here and gave them a plate ID of 101. And I cut out all the pieces on this section of oceanic plate and gave them a plate ID of 302. Same deal with the island arcs and the subduction zones. Just like we did the last time we created a new plate. What's different this time is that we have co-moving plates. So we want these two to move as one. So there's a little tweak we need to make in our rotation file. So here's the rotation file and here is the code I put in for our new plates. Again, nothing new follows the previous videos. And same thing here for plate 302 at the end. And I've called them ocean three and Ocean 2, just because. So if we don't change anything from last time, we'll have a case where Ocean 2, which is this green section of ocean, it will follow A up until 6.30, then it'll start moving independently all the way to the end of the simulation. Same deal with plate 302, which is this lime green stuff here. Ocean 3 follows C until 6.30, where it starts moving independently, but we do not want both of these to move independently. We have to wire one to the other. So just for the sake of it, I'm gonna wire everything that's 101 to 302. So I'm going to wire the dark green to the light green. So I'm going to go up to plate 101 and instead of start moving independently, I'm going to change the conjugate plate ID here to 302. And this would be start following ocean three. And then the same thing would have to go up here. 302, ocean two at the end of simulation. So again, ocean two, all the dark green, it follows A, which is this blue craton, up until 6.30, at which point it becomes its own plate, but it follows 302, the lime green, instead of going independently. Okay, so if I get rid of the lime bricks and save that, assuming I've done everything correctly, these two plates should now move as one. So if I select the lime green here, P on the keyboard, highlight children, everything there is highlighted. They all move as one. So again, unlike last time where we created a single new plate, this time we're creating a new plate that is co-moving. Okay, so with that done, all what I'm gonna do now is just evolve this forward a little bit, resolve the island arcs, add in terrain, subduct the oceans, set the subducted pieces to end, etc. All of this has been covered. So this is gonna be one giant time-lapse as a sort of like quick recap of everything we've covered so far. No new information, time-lapse, and then we'll do some mountain building. Okay, cool. So uh, one thing to point out there, I forgot to add flow lines like a fool. So I had to input them there midway through that. Second thing to point out is check it out. The new supercontinent 
uh, is reforming. This chap is coming this way. This chap is coming this way. This chap is coming this way. We'll get a new supercontinent somewhere here. All going well. And then the last thing to point out is that uh, some people in comments uh, questioned the validity of adding a subduction zone here when there's already one up here. Seems like that would be contradictory motion. Continent is heading this way. Old ocean is heading that way. Whereas here you'd think continent is heading this way to the south and old ocean is heading to the north. That seems contradictory. The key thing here is speed differential. This continent is heading north, we'll call it, at about three centimeters per year, per million years. And this ocean plate is heading north as well, except at a speed I put it at about 11 centimeters per year, which is a touch fast, but I wanted to get most of this island arc sunk. So this subduction zone works because essentially this new oceanic plate is like rear ending this continent. It's like ramming into the back of it and being subducted. So things moving in the same direction can still be subducted due to speed differential. All right, time lapse mode re-engaged.
All right, simulation done. We'll stop the movement here and we'll just call it modern world for the sake of the tutorial. Everything beyond this point is, again, iteration of what we've already covered. But there's one last thing I want to cover before we start talking about mountains, and that is this continent here. So these two continents came together, smashed into one another, and we're going to have a bunch of mountains here. Now, it's worth noting that this suture here, that is the junction between the pink and the blue, is a weak spot in the continental crust and may rift apart in the future, if you so desire. Now, you'd think if you were going to do that, all you do is run a rift through this section here. If such rifting were to occur, we'd expect an exchange of area. Pink will gain some of blue's area and blue will gain some of pink's area. So just to demonstrate, I'll go ahead and jot and rift L on the keyboard. And essentially this is back to exactly what we covered in video one of this G plate series. So everything comes full circle. So if I were to rift this apart, I would do something like, something like that. Oh, make sure to go all the way to the edge of the plate. Yeah, something like that. Again, pink has gained some area, blue has gained some area. There's been an exchange of crust. All right, create feature, continental rift. Next, plate ID, remember, all the way back to video one, plate ID of one for rifts begins at, we'll call it 600, distant future, rift 600. Next, next, and we'll put that in rifts and go create. It'll disappear because I got rifts hidden and we'll turn it on. There we go. And just if you are going to do this, hold the continents together for a while. Don't bang them together and then immediately pull them apart. Bang them together, stick them together for a while, let them move together for a bit, and then rift them apart if you so desire. All right. And with that, I think it is time to go back to the start of the simulation and talk mountain building. Okay, so quick recap on orogeny. Orogenies are major mountain building events that occur along convergent boundaries. They come in four flavors, two subduction zone orogenies, Andean style orogeny and Laramide style orogeny, and then two collisional orogenies, Ural style orogeny and Himalayan style orogeny. Andean orogeny looks like Shakarati Andes, comparatively thin mountain ranges on coasts with offshore subduction zones. Laramide orogenies looks like the Rockies in the US, like Andean but broader. They occur where subduction is particularly rapid and or when a mid-ocean ridge gets subducted under. Ural style orogeny looks like the Urals. Comparatively thin mountain ranges that form as a result of simple collisions between land masses. And or if one or more of the land masses involved are small. And finally, Himalayan style orogeny looks like the Himalayas. Broad high plateaus that form as a result of really complex continental collisions, really energetic continental collisions, or just in general, if two big continents come together. All right, those are the four types. Let's start marking them in. So we'll start with the Andean orogeny along these coasts here that have the subduction zone offshore. Hit S on the keyboard and then measure out about 100 kilometers. You don't need to be too precise here. That's about 70, that's fine, that'll do. And then go G on the keyboard and draw in a thin line that represents the mountains. And the thickness of this is a about a hundred as well, but again, you don't need to be too particular with this. Okay, something like that. Create feature. We're looking for orogenic belt. Next, plate ID is 100 in this instance. Forms at a thousand million years ago, goes into the distant future, and we'll call this Andean 1000. Next, next. And then we want to create a new feature collection, create and save, and save that feature collection as active orogenies. Save, close, then go down to the layers panel here, or over to the layers panel, control or command L if you don't see it, twiddle down the drop down menu for active orogenies, go to fill polygons, set draw style, single color, and make them black. So they stand out. Oh, and also let's drop the fill here just for a second down to maybe 0.5. Okay, same deal for the rest of them. The idea of 300 this time, because it's attached to pink crate on. All right, done. So let's now go for the time step, 950, and add our various orogenies as we need them. Now for island arcs, you could in theory add orogenies on them, but we'll just work on the assumption that there is continuous volcanism occurring on island arcs. There's no need to add them in. 
when they collide with something or if they survive to the modern world, then we can do something. But for now, we'll just leave them. These bits, however, have fused with the continent. So I might redo this to encompass these. So I'm gonna hit F on the keyboard. I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna copy geometry to digitize tool. And then I'm just gonna, yeah, draw something to encompass these. Sure. G, create feature, orogenic belt, 201, and D in style orogeny at 950. Next, next. Active orogeny is create, done, and then I'm gonna select the old feature and set it to disappear at this time. Cool. Forward another time step. We have a new subduction zone opened here. So we want to add in again, and D in style orogeny. Plate ID of 200 this time because attached to the green craton. And it just occurred to me, did I put the age wrong in this one? I did. This begins at 950. Cool. Onwards. Okay. New subduction zone. Again, Andy and Stylerogeny all along here. Okay, so here we have an island arc that has smashed into our continent. And that occurred at 740. Okay, cool. So we'll go back to 740. So we have a collision going on here. So that means we're dealing with either Ural or Himalayan style orogeny. No way in hell that this is Himalayan. This is a very, very small section of continent of crust that is being accreted onto this. So Ural orogeny. And what we basically want to do here, whenever you have this sort of island arc collision and accreted terrain, you want to cover most of the accreted terrain with most of the time a Ural orogeny. So very simple, G on the keyboard, and then just make a shape. And you can overlap things here if you want, or you can be super neat, it's up to you. So create feature, orogenic belt, correct. Plate ID 300, good. Start time is 740, and this will be Ural at 740. Next, next, and put that into active orogenies. Okay, and even though this is gonna be involved in the collision, just for the sake of um, completion, I guess, we will add in uh, the orogeny here as well. Again, this is Andean because we have an offshore subduction zone. This is not collisional because it's more like this offshore island arc just grew to fuse with the continent as opposed to colliding with it. I'm not too worried about this shape because again, everything's gonna change here when these collide. And now we have this to deal with. Oh dear, I put in a plate ID of 6.30 there. That could not be more wrong. Something needs to change there. Hold on a second. Did I really just put in a plate ID of 6.30? Yep, uh, like a fool. Copy geometry to digitize tool, create feature, orogenic belt, plate ID of 300, and then that's fine. And then we'll kill the silly copy. Be gone. Okay, now our big collisional orogeny. So whenever you have something like this, Orogeny should form along the borders of this like collision zone after we deform the continent. So in my case, it might look something like this perhaps. So I'm gonna say that this section has been completely engulfed in it. So I'll bring it down to, yeah, let's bring it down to here. I'm just tracing along this deformation line a little bit, or deformation area a little bit. In fact, I may as well just 
you can just become part of the mountain. The exact shape of these things are like artistic interpretation. I'm sure there's some geology things that we could be doing to make them more accurate, but like quite frankly, go with a shape that you find appealing. Okay, something like that for now, but we can change it later. G on the keyboard, much the same as before. Create feature, orogenic belt, plate ID, we'll give it a plate ID of 300 because this is the main craton on this newly formed continent. And we'll call this Himalayan just for the sake of variety, but really like these are very small land masses in the grand scheme of things. The land masses didn't come together very quickly or anything. So really it should be Ural, but just, just for the sake of it. Now, we need to do some cleanup. First things first, this orogeny here, we know that it became this lump of like accreted deformed terrain here in the pink. We could draw it in there if we so desire, but I'm just gonna set it to disappear this time. Okay, so it's gone. And we'll say like this lump here, we know that it became the blue section here. So if we scroll back into simulation, there it is, there's the blue section and then the blue section got smushed into here. So this is part of the blue section. So again, we could draw it in if we wanted to, but I'm just gonna set it to disappear at this, at this time step. And then we should tidy up these as well. This is the same method as tidying up ocean crust. Select the feature, clone the feature, create a right copy and a left copy, set the end time for the bit you want the bits appear. You know the deal. So I'll just do this in time-lapse. But it's worth noting it doesn't disappear, it just becomes deformed and buckled and part of this major mountain chain. Okay, now we'll need to come back to this in a second, but I'm just going to keep scrolling it forward to see if there's any more orogenies. Like we have to put in one with this island arc and this island arc, and I think then we are done. Yeah, we got two lumps of things happening here. Okay, so. Okay, cool. That is all of the orogenies. Now, the only thing that's left to cover is this major orogeny here. Now, unlike Andean orogeny, where mountain building is constant because of the offshore subduction zone, the mountain building in this region will only be active as the continents are colliding. So, root of thumb here is one time step after the continents have come together, we should mark this as being inactive. So this came together at, or this orogeny was formed at 630. Now my sim ends at 600, so I'm just gonna go to 600. Select the feature. Sometimes there are multiple features to select. You'll have to repeat this process for each of them. Copy geometry, create feature, orogenic belt, next. Plate ID, same plate ID, but beginning at this time step. So 600, 600, and this was Himalayan, 600. Next, next. And instead of putting it in active orogenies, we're going to create a new feature collection, create and save. And we're going to save this feature collection as former orogenies. All right. Hit return. Cool. And now take the old feature, the once active feature, go to edit feature, controller command E, and then set that to end at this time step. Again, you should go for a full 50 million years. I'm only going 30 because that's the end of the simulation. Okay, and let's find former orogenies up here and let's move it below active orogenies. Twiddle down the drop down arrow, go to fill polygons, set draw style, and this time choose feature age and set it to monochrome and hit close. And what this does is it makes the feature black when it's starting off and it gradually fades it to white as it ages, which is cool because this is no longer active. It is a former orogeny. So erosion takes over and begins to grind down the mountain range. So we can visually see that happen. 
Now, the only issue is that once you get to 450 million years old, this feature gets to 450 million years old, it will snap back to black. For reasons I don't understand. I don't know why G-Plates does this. Fortunately, this isn't too much of a problem because after like literal half a billion years of erosion, basically any mountain range is going to be ground down to flat land. The roots of the mountain range, like the underlying tough rock, would still exist and could later still be uplifted, so it's worth keeping track of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the point where this changes to black. So if this was created at 600 and it flips after 450 million years, for the sake of demonstration purposes, we'll then go to 150 million years where it flips. Select the feature, which is remarkably tricky to do when it, the feature is itself white, but I think that's it selected. Copy geometry to digitize tool, create new feature, orogenic belt, next plate ID 300, cool. This will begin life at 150, but we'll keep the dating here because the original mountain building event was at 600 million years ago. We'll go next, next, and then new feature collection, create and save, and save this new feature collection as old orogenies. And we will take the old orogenies layer, yeah, and put it above active and former. And of course, we mentioned that you can rift these things apart at a later date. So you'd split the features using the copy geometry to digitize tool, just like we did in not the first video, maybe the second video of this series, which has already been covered. And that, I think, is everything one needs to know about mountain building, about orogeny. I suppose the last thing to talk about is that the four categories of orogeny, Andean, Laramide, Ural, and Himalayan, like these aren't like distinct points or distinct categories. Like the whole thing is basically a continuum and it's worth bearing that in mind. Like sometimes you can have situations where you're like, oh, is it Ural, is it Himalayan? I don't know. If you're aware that there's a spectrum there, a continuum, then you should be okay. We didn't have a chance to put down any Laramide orogenies in, in this sim, so Rocky style orogeny. As you might imagine from looking at the Rockies, all it entails is creating a thicker band of mountains. And again, remember it occurs if the subduction is particularly rapid or, and most often go with this option, if a mid-ocean ridge is sucked in. Oh wait, hold on. Wait a minute. Having said that, having said that, where's the... Mid-ocean ridge getting sucked in. Oh, but it misses the... The mid-ocean ridge gets sucked in here. So it like, it misses... It misses the continent. Shame. And what you can do, because imagine a ridge is coming in hot here, and it deforms a bunch of land way inland of what we'd expect with Andean orogeny. That deformation will stop once the mid-ocean ridge has fully subducted. So you can set like the inner portion of a Laramide style orogeny to be a former orogeny and keep this one active if there's still a subduction zone there. But doing so follows on from the principles already outlined in this video. Okay, as is customary, time for uh, an outro time lapse. Once again, thank you so much for watching, folks. We are very nearly done with this series. I think it's another two, three videos perhaps. And then I get to unveil Artifexia, like the actual world. I am so excited. <laughs> thanks to World Running Pasta. Thanks to Van Gogh Van Gogh. Thanks to you for watching. Thanks to the patrons. Y'all are beautiful, beautiful nerds. Until next time. Ed Grouch. Whoops, I forgot a thing. Sorry, it's me. It's me again. Uh, all the Rogenies, twiddle down the drop down menu. Uh, fill polygon, set draw style, single color, white, perfect. Now we're done. Until next time, Edgar out. <laughs>